for music lovers, the Malvern Hills are as English as Sir Edward Elgar, who was born not far away in the Worcestershire countryside at Lower Broadheath. Their name is Welsh in origin, derived from moor or board, and they rise abruptly from the spa town of Great Malvern, dividing the Severn Valley from the undulating hills of Herefordshire. It is a landscape charged with passion, inspiration, and a great sense of history. Success for Elgar meant living in London, but he was always passionate about his hills, and much of his music reflects this in spirit, if not by name. He would travel by train. The line from Worcester to Hereford had opened just three years after his birth in 1860. The station at Great Malvern served as a grand entrance for visitors taking the cure, and its architecture reflects the status of the spa town. Much of it is Romanesque, having round arched windows and doors. Attention to detail is seen in the capitals on its columns, the creation by a local sculptor, William Forsyth, in the form of flowers and foliage associated with the Malvern Hills, an uplifting welcome for passengers seeking a relief from life's ailments. Great Malvern also has a magnificent priory, noted for its stained glass, dating from the end of the 15th century. The railway line continues under the Malvern Hills to the market town of Ledbury, which Elgar would have known as he was a keen cyclist. Ledbury is rich in timber-framed buildings, the most notable being Market House, in the centre of town built in 1617. As you would expect, Church Lane leads to St Michael and All Angels, which dates from the 12th century. If you are looking for images that reflect the town's historic past, this is the place to look. From Ledbury, take the A449 towards Great Malvern, stopping at the car park just below the Herefordshire beacon, and then it is Shanks's pony all the way to the top, but the paths are good and in places tarmac, but steep. This is one of the best and indeed classic views of the Malvern Hills, stretching into the far distance to the Worcestershire beacon, the highest point at 1,395 feet, but you need the right sort of day. Also known as the British Camp, the beacon has one of the finest earthworks in Britain, an ideal landscape for studies in light and shade. This is one of many spots where it is claimed that Caractacus, the British chieftain, made his last stand against the Romans, and nearby where Owen Glyndwr, Prince of Wales, made an unsuccessful attempt to defeat the English in the 15th century. So, this is a view imbued with a tremendous sense of history, which we explore in its wake. For me, I just have to go back to the Victorian era and Sir Edward Elgar. Although he lived in London and Sussex, he was never content unless he was within sight of his beloved Malvern Hills. I have walked them on countless occasions, in winter and summer, and I cannot stride out without having one of his famous melodies resonating in my mind. 